system, economy, and social disruption, extreme poverty, millions of global entrepreneurs, they have an existential threat. Global workforce is at a risk and they are looking for the livelihood and this pandemic has decimated jobs and placed many livelihoods at the risk. So we at Dr. Ambedkar College and Department of Commerce, they took an initiative, the thinkers and the academician, they recognized the opportunity to build back better. So we are committed to pooling our experience and expertise to stop these crisis responses and measures and effects to achieve the sustainable development goals to need to develop long-term sustainable strategies to adopt the challenges facing with the health agriculture sector and promote the formulations of internal or informal economy. So today we are very fortunate to have with us a very young, talented lady entrepreneurs, which will throw light on topic sustainable entrepreneurship. A warm welcome to today's chief eminence guest speakers of the international webinar, Ms. Tatiana Sharpe, founder and CEO, Global Impact Network Inc. And another Ms. Akshay Shri, founder, director of Hilpakarnam and TAG, Udyog Limited. Uh, we are also with us uh, Mayuri N. She is Chief Information uh, Officer at this program. I once again welcome you, Madam. Uh, the Director of uh, Shilpakarnam, Madam, welcome, Akshay Ashri. And today's program organizer, that is the co uh, the convener of the program, Head of the Department of Commerce, Dr. Varsha Pangude, Madam, Associate Professor at our college, Co-convener, Dr. Puttevar, madam. She is assistant professor at college. And Ms. Shefali Rai, she is organizing secretary of this conference and she is very instrumental for organizing this conference. Madam, a lot of efforts you have made to organize this conference. So my thank you to all the team. Mr. Akhil, uh, Dr. Akhil Ramteke, assistant professor, he is also an organizing team. Sankal Tharke and all other professors who are involved in organizing this conference. I acknowledge uh, my heart, heart uh, uh, wishes to blessings to all this Department of Commerce colleagues. So it's a great job, a great applaud to all of the, this, my colleague. Uh, Vice Principal, Professor Evatkar, Head Department of Physics, IQSC Coordinator, Professor Hema Menon, Head Department of Law, and my worthy colleagues, I think Vice Chancellor is also there. So again, welcome, sir, for this program. All my dear students who are streaming on online on Zoom and YouTube. And once again, I welcome you all for today's program. Madam, our college is established in the year 1964 by Padamshi late Dada Gaikwar on Holy Diksha Bhumi, a revolutionary land where Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar emirate Buddhism. In 1956, this educational institution is planted and nurtured by two luminarian, late Honorable Shri R.S. Gavai Sahib, President of Smarak Samiti, and fatherly figure and driving force, late Shri Sadanandji Fuljale Sahib, Secretary Smarak Samiti, the time trusted center for higher learning and quality education in all arts, commerce, and law and management science, taking a modest leap under the leadership of the press, present president, uh, Holy Bhante Sarai Sasai, and the president of Young Visionary, Dr. Sudhir Puljali, sir, Secretary Smarak Samiti, and Director of Institute of Management Studies and Research. In our college, our students, we ignite the spark in the young minds and channelize the energy for overall development of the student. So this is also a one step ahead that we organize this conference for our students because they should know what is a sustainable entrepreneurship. Today's international webinar will open the insight and sustainability and entrepreneurship and innovative mark over the oriented and personally driven form of value creation by environmentally or socially, which benefits the innovation and products exceeding the startup phase of company so sustainable entrepreneurs focus on a business idea that balances the social, economic, and environmental impact. The main 
great or it has a main goal which must be approached by the business activity of the sustainable entrepreneurship and therefore we look forward for the prosperity environment friendly and nation building with this positive note of hope i once again welcome you all for today's international webinar on sustainable entrepreneurship so i welcome you all and thank you for inviting me thank you all thank you indeed ma'am and your encouraging words are always a motivation and inspiration for all of us to conduct such programs with full vigor thank you ma'am and on i would like to invite uh, our hod uh, head of the department mrs varsha panbade ma'am and convener of this program to please give her introductory remark uh, thank you shepali uh, am i audible avaz yes, audible uh, good morning all today's guest speakers of the international webinar ms tatiana sharpe founder and ceo global impact network uh, ms akshara shri founder of shilpa karman and founder director of tad udyog uh, respected uh, vice chancellor choudhary sir our beloved principal dr mere madam in house and out house delegates and my colleagues my warm greetings to all of you normally it's presume that entrepreneurship with sustainability don't work parallelly entrepreneurship development helps to generate employment and at the same time it contributes for development of economy but on the other hand in the process of manufacturing goods and services some waste material and harmful by products are generated which eventually lead to pollution and affect human health thus it is it has become a necessity to implement sustain sustainability in each and every sector sustainable living sustainable homes uh, green buildings sustainable farming sustainable transport natural products sustainable entrepreneurship and so on adopting green technology use of eco friendly material production of eco friendly products is the need of the hour. keeping this theme in the mind we have organized this webinar for this webinar we are blessed with two eminent speakers whose deeds speaks louder than words i welcome and thank our guest speakers for accepting our invitation your guidance knowledge and experience will enrich our minds and eventually deeds we are delighted to work with tatiana ma'am and akshaya ma'am in future as well i congratulate all the delegates for attending this webinar i am sure that upcoming two hours will definitely change our approach towards our lifestyle thank you thank you ma'am for your encouraging words it is uh, very nice to hear uh, how we can you know create a sustainable world uh, which is beneficial for all of us especially for our future generations on that note i would like to inform everybody that uh, we've almost received 350 registrations from all over the world including united states nepal sri lanka philippines australia qatar and many more countries we have national registrations uh, all over the country as well from J jnk jammu and kashmir to kerala and from rajasthan to assam i would also like to extend a very warm welcome to all the delhi university professors and colleagues who joined us in this webinar friends i hereby take the pleasure to introduce our guest speaker for this webinar we have with us a very multifaceted personality ms akshya shri speaker for our first session on the topic sustainable entrepreneurship as she has also been listed by forbes under 30 achievers for a sustainable business startup we couldn't have any better speaker than her i would like to thank her for associating with our college for this webinar she is very very kind and welcoming and on all as great personalities do her reputation precedes her now i would like to introduce her she has launched a bamboo craft brand silk kamen and is working with 252 rural artisans across five craft categories in tripura her education entails pg diploma corporate law and management from the indian law institute and ba honors business economics from delhi university college of vocational studies delhi her milestones achievements include participant of the project her and now for economic empowerment 
of women entrepreneurs and startups by women. On behalf of the German Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development and in partnership with the Indian Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. She has also been incubated with the Atal Incubation Center Banastali Vidyapit, Rajasthan, participated at the Global Entrepreneurship Summit, winner of the We Can India program, a business plan competition organized by Dhriti, developed in partnership with Cherry Blair Foundation, and affiliated with Northeastern Development Finance Corporation since 2015. About Silk Perman, it's a bamboo craft brand with 7,000 plus units sold till now and exposed to Sweden, Norway, and Johannesburg. 15 plus SKUs on Amazon, in.com, and World Art Community. Trademark approved and published in the Trademark Journal, and 25K plus SKUs have been launched in April 2020 on Etsy and Pepper Fry. She has created innovative products from bamboo and place-based value chains that provide sustainable income opportunities to aligned communities. It's a pleasure to have you with us, Akshya. And now I request you to please conduct your session. Thank you. Thank you for such a wonderful uh, introduction, Shifali. And uh, thank you to all the faculty members, the principal, uh, the head of department. You have all been very warm and welcoming and very motivating today morning. So I'm just um, hoping that uh, this uh, session that I'll be taking will be informative and uh, worthy enough uh, for me as a speaker and for you all as, a, as an institute. So I'll just start with uh, sharing my screen. Yes. Give me a minute. It's visible, Aksha. Okay, great. Sure. So today's topic, uh, sustainable entrepreneurship, is something that is very close to my heart uh, because uh, since the beginning of uh, my venture and my entrepreneurial journey, I've been very focused on to building something that does not just sustain and last in this generation, but also for generations to come that uh, will not just set uh, a benchmark for people today, but also for a younger generation tomorrow. And... Uh, so for today's uh, session, the topics that I'll be, uh, that I picked up are concepts of sustainability and case studies of sustainable entrepreneurship. For me, the reason I took concept of sustainability uh, as one of the core uh, explanation topics here is because uh, I strongly feel that sustainability is multidimensional and it can be used anywhere and everywhere and it must be incorporated into daily lifestyles from individual to corporations. And thereafter, we'll be discussing certain case studies where sustainable entrepreneurship has been seen and exercised and how these things are creating a better uh, social and environmental impact. Uh, but to begin with, I don't really like uh, doing a more generic and serious uh, uh, session. So I'm going to begin with the story of King Prithu, uh, which is a bit of a lesson reference of sustainability from mythology. So uh, we'll try, uh, do not really take it as, a, uh, you know, coming uh, from a Hindu or, a, or any other religious perspective. What I'm trying to convey here is that if you pick up any religious text or uh, prominent books, there you will find certain stories that will direct you towards the concept of sustainability. And uh, what I'm trying to do here is provoke uh, a thought of action that uh, how can we implicate these story lessons into our life and uh, become more sustainable and create a more sustainable environment, community and culture. So before we actually start with uh, the story of King Prithu, we have to understand uh, the story of his birth. So uh, there was a king um, in um, Bharat Varsha, you'll find this uh, reference to the story in uh, Vishnu Puran and Harivansh Puran and Manav Puran. Uh, there was a king called King Vena. Uh, 
and uh, he was from the lineage of uh, king dhruva dhruva was uh, the grandson of manu and uh, according to hindu scriptures manu was the first man on earth so he was from that lineage and he was a very very evil king he would discard all social norms and he exploited mother nature uh, very badly and uh, uh, he would not follow any kind of uh, vedic rituals too so citing his exploitation and his torture uh, the mother earth took form of a cow and she ran away uh, and when she ran away there was famine there was distress there was death on planet earth and uh, citing this the sages the rishis uh, 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 in the country they thought that we'll have to do something we'll have to save the world so they killed king vena so all the rishis together took the matter into their hands they killed king vena and then with the dead corpse of uh, king vena they churned it they, they they did a manthan of the corpse and when they did that they found two different variants so first was all the negative qualities of king vena and the second was all the positive qualities of king vena so they discarded the negative and kept only the positive and that form of positive was king prithu so when king prithu was born out of the corpses of uh, king vena he was assigned the task of bringing back mother earth who had ran away in form of the cow so king vena took his chariot and he started chasing the mother cow who was running here and there and she absolutely refused to come back to uh, to come back to earth because her her opinion was that even if i come back you're going to go back to the same ways and uh, the chase went on for a long time and finally uh, king prithu had to raise his bow and arrow uh, in some stories it is written that he had to raise his sword to corner uh, the cow uh, which is the mother earth and uh, get her to a point of negotiation so when uh, mother nature uh, mother cow saw that uh, uh, king uh, prithu has raised his bow and arrow she halted and she told him that look prithu if you going to kill me your subjects will die too and that is when king prithu lowered his bow and arrow and he understood that his subjects that is his people are related to the mother earth and that he's not just the guardian of his people he's also the guardian of mother earth and that's when king prithu went on to promise uh, mother earth that he is not only going to take care of his subject but he's also going to take care of her and be a guardian so that nobody ever takes more than that's necessary from her and that since uh, the mother earth uh, got a guardian guardianship of prithu we got the word prithvi which is a hindi word for earth so uh, guarded by prithu is prithvi right and uh, drawing from this aspect we moved forward and uh, when prithu got uh, the permission of mother earth to uh, create a civilization that is when we got our villages we got the roads we got the trades we got the houses um, the concept here that we need to understand here is that whenever we are creating a civilization whenever we are creating a culture whenever we are creating a city there are act of exploitation and violences that we conduct with the natural resources the prakriti the earth that we are doing so say if you want to build roads you'll have to use your tools on the on the land if you have to grow uh, farm products you'll have to use your tools on the farm land so these kind of exploitations are necessary if we have to sustain uh, as a society as a culture but when we forget our boundaries and we just take and take and never give back to the nature that is where the disbalance creates and this is what brings me to the concept of sustainability now if we, if we talk uh, in a very layman a uh, simple language drawing from the story uh, what is sustainability uh, so for me first thing is that you take some and you give some whenever you are creating something that you are drawing resources be it natural resources or be it resources from someone else do not always focus on taking Uh, also focus on how you can give back to the society or how you can give back to the people or how you can give back to the nature so that is one concept 
of sustainability. Um, the, another sustain, uh, concept of sustainability is how to build uh, activities, thoughts of action, where we can avoid depletion of resources so that we can maintain a balance. Uh, just now when HOD Madam said that uh, we have to maintain uh, environmental and ecological balance, that is precisely one of the core concepts of sustainability, citing and fighting for balance so that even if you take something from the natural resources or resources around you, you're always able to give back and maintain uh, uh, the resource in such a manner that it does not get depleted and we can forward it to the future generations. The third concept that uh, the story and general concepts of uh, sustainability brings us to is to maintain something at a certain level. Now, say, uh, we all know that natural resources are limited to a certain extent. So we have to make sure that whenever you are using it or whenever you are taking uh, something from natural or unnatural sources, you have to maintain it all to a certain level. If you just take a simple example of uh, even starting a business and say you have X amount set aside to invest in the venture, you always have to make sure that your business or your enterprise remains liquid at a certain stage so that it does not stumble. So maintaining things at a certain level, uh, be it economic growth, be it participation of people from all sections of society, be it inclusive growth, everything has to be maintained at a certain level. And that is another concept of sustainability. Uh, the more core uh, concept of sustainability that I totally adhere with is the balance of resources. Uh, like I've always been saying that uh, resources are very, very limited, be it human resources, be it time, be it money, be it uh, nature resources, they are all very limited. So we have to constantly keep innovating and working out ways where we use only very limited amount of these resources and create a balance, right? We cannot just keep using one resource and neglect the other. And we cannot just keep using, you know, uh, more of one and less of one. There has to be a balance. There has to be an innovation. There has to be uh, something that uh, uh, combines together and creates a better world. Uh, one concept that is very close to my philosophy and the something that I uh, like to call sustainability is guarding while creating. Uh, just like in the story of Prithu, we are all guardians of this planet we are all guardians of the society we are all guardians of our community and while we create something for ourselves or our families or our community we have to make sure that we guard these philosophies and the heritage of our society culture and the world so while you guard the resources while you guard the heritage while you guard the uh, uh, the concepts of your community and you create something that is what sustainability is for me. So guarding while creating, that is my, my motto of sustainability. Now, moving forward, uh, now that we have discussed sustainability and I'm sure you all have got uh, some idea of uh, uh, what sustainability is. I'm sure as we move forward and we read more case studies and we understand by the end of this session, you will all be able to adopt certain sustainable practices and you will be able to understand sustainability as a general practice and not, and not as something uh, beyond your reach or beyond your limits. Um, so now going forward, we are going to discuss the concept of entrepreneurship. So now entrepreneurship is um, uh, initially, if you would ask somebody, they would have said that developing a business by taking risks and generating profit is entrepreneurship. Now, uh, but to, in today's world, entrepreneurship is not just limited to generating profit or taking risk, but it is also creating something. It is creating a new world. It is creating a new value chain. It is creating a new product. It is creating a new community. So entrepreneurship is a lot more than just 
profits and business. For example, uh, Tatiana is here today with us as a guest speaker, and what she has created is a is a uh, is a network for people who are who are interested into creating impact, uh, which is a which is a brilliant thing. Imagine uh, something that comes from within, and to create uh, a platform into entrepreneurship is something that is uh, very commendable. So creating is entrepreneurship. Innovation is entrepreneurship. When the, even if it is at a micro level, innovating something is uh, entrepreneurship. Then employment generation. You're not just working for yourself. You're also working for the people who, are, who you are surrounded with, people who you feel accountable to. And thereupon, risk. Yes, entrepreneurship is never, never uh, away from the risk of uh, businesses. Entrepreneurship is very instilled with risk. You're risking your time. You're risking your resources. Uh, you're risking uh, your, for, to a lot of people who start young, you know, there are always choices that they have. So they give up one to take up one. So there are always risks involved in entrepreneurship. And then there is profit. So profit here is not just limited to money. Profit is also when you create an impact. So what, what have you profited from an entrepreneurship or from an venture can not just be limited to money, but it can also be the impact that you generate or maybe the profitability of the community or maybe the profitability of the nature. So profit is not just limited to money in entrepreneurship now. It is also a greater multidimensional concept of benefits to the society and to the nature. Now, if we combine the two concepts, the concept of sustainability and the concept of entrepreneurship, what is it that we get? What is exactly sustainable entrepreneurship? So if you talk about sustainable entrepreneurship, this is what it is for me. Balance plus profits. Now, like I said, uh, profits are not just limited to money. It is also the impact that we create and the benefits that bring to the society and to the world collectively. So finding a balance in any of the sustainable goals, be it uh, inclusive growth, be it uh, uh, reaching out to international markets, be it uh, using optimum utilization of your resources, balance plus Profits and benefits is what uh, is what the layman, layman and simple term of sustainable entrepreneurship, right? Now, um, now that we have discussed sustainable entrepreneurship and we have seen what it means as a theory, uh, I'm going to take up uh, some case studies that will actually help you understand the implication of sustainability and sustainable entrepreneurship. So the first case study that I have picked up for today is of a platform called Lyft. Um, Lyft is a, a, a company founded in 2012. It is currently valued at uh, 11 billion US dollars and um, it's second to Uber in the United States. So it's a very widely used ride hailing app like it's called Lyft. So uh, they, uh, they are a very prominent app uh, amongst the users for, for ride hailing in the United States. Uh, but of late, uh, uh, Lyft and Uber were criticized continuously for the carbon emission that the brand makes and also uh, for the congestion that it is causing on roads. So citing this in 2017, uh, when Lyft was just a five-year-old company, they had declared uh, social impact goals 2025. So these goals define that a lift is not just going to offset its carbon emission, but it is also going to reduce the carbon emission done by the transportation sector at large. So for this, what they have done is they are going to invest in autonomous uh, electric vehicle that will be running on renewable energy sources. And apart from that, they have invested about 2 million US dollar already to get carbon credits of about 20 lakh uh, 65,500. So that's the amount of carbon emission they were envisioning and they invested this amount of money to get those many carbon credits. Now, if you, uh, uh, for just an explanation of uh, carbon credits, there is a very popular uh, pattern in the, the West and it's now coming to India too. If you'll see Zomato also mentions that they have um, 
carbon offset their carbon emissions through certain platforms. So what uh, the companies and institutions and individuals can do these days is they can document their carbon emissions that they are causing and they can contribute towards a cause, be it forestation, be it ecological practices, be it institutions who are working towards uh, restoring environment, uh, they contribute to such causes and what they get in return is carbon credit. Because, for example, now that we are working on our laptops and using this system and using Zoom, there is some amount of carbon imaging we are all uh, committing. So to offset these things, there are platforms that will help you uh, offset your carbon. That is, you can uh, contribute into sustainable practices or plantation drives. And this is precisely what Lyft has done to make its ride carbon neutral. Now, this is one aspect of sustainability that Lyft has incorporated into its working model, that they will go carbon neutral. And what has this earned for Lyft? Now, uh, ever since Lyft integrated this into their marketing campaign, uh, the people, the customers who were using Lyft have become very more aware of the fact that Lyft not just understands their need for ride hailing, but also them as a conscious customer. So there is a more, there's a better harmony between the customers and the organization, which has led them to have a better customer retention and a better rate of customer acquisition. And since then, Lyft has been gaining uh, more and more riders each day. So uh, just imagine opting for this one sustainable practice, Lyft come across as uh, a sustainable uh, enterprise and which is apparently also profit making. So you have to understand that, and this profit is not just uh, limited to the profits of the company, but it also benefits the riders because they have a conscious that they are, their ride is carbon neutral. So uh, adopting such sustainable uh, practices, even profitable companies have been able to not just retain customers, but change their brand imaging into something which is more holistic and future oriented. Uh, now, the second example, the second case study is a very popular case study, and a, it has been taught uh, in all the majors, B school, and I'm sure a lot of you must have already come across this case study in one way or the other because this case study somewhat uh, establishes the concept of social entrepreneurship also. And this case study is of Denon. Uh, Denon goes by the goal of One Planet, One Health. And uh, they have been doing this since its conception. So I'll take some time into uh, introducing you or telling you about Denon's journey. I'll keep it really short. Uh, in the year 1919, Daniel uh, Corcus. Uh, he came across the fact that a lot of Spanish kids were uh, suffering from intestinal infections. And uh, this, was lack, uh, this was lack of good bacteria in the gut. And that is why there were intestinal infections that were happening. So uh, following this, uh, uh, Mr. Daniel thought that he has to develop something that, uh, that will be able, able to help the kids. So he was aware of uh, the work of uh, Mrs. Uh, Elia Mechukinov. Uh, she was a Nobel laureate who was working on lactate bacteria culture. And uh, he was also aware of a Balkan Greek recipe of creating yogurt. And yogurt is known to have good gut bacteria, which will help, uh, gut, which helps gut health. So, um, when uh, Daniel came across this uh, uh, this uh, recipe and this product, he thought that let me not let me just introduce it in uh, into Spain so that the kids can have a better uh, health. And that's where Denon came from. Uh, he named it after his son, and uh, it became very popular eventually. And uh, everybody was uh, having yogurt in uh, Spain and Barcelona. Thereafter, in the year 1929, they expanded to France. And in the year 1941, uh, Daniel, along with his wife, went to US. And in US, they found a couple, just when he went, a couple of days later, he came across an advertisement wherein uh, someone has mentioned that they are selling off their yogurt business. And that struck a chord with Daniel. And he went on to inquire that there was a Greek couple who was sent, uh, selling off their uh, 
uh, uh, yogurt business uh, and they, they used to supply to the local restaurants and stores. So buying that uh, brand name, that Goodwill, uh, in the 1941, uh, Daniel established a company in United States. Thereafter, in 1972, um, the non did a partnership, a, a merger with a company <coughs> called BSN. And at that time, BSN was doing, uh, they were initially a glass and a jar maker company. And thereafter, they went on to do um, food businesses. So uh, with this merger, by the year 1979, Denon and BSN were the third largest food and beverage com company in Europe. And uh, taking on this legacy forward, in uh, 1991, uh, there was uh, another uh, CEO appointed uh, called Frank Ribo. And that is when they redefined uh, the brand model and the trust model and the business model for Denon, uh, forming it as a company that works for planet preservation, for inclusive growth, and for sustainable development and growth along with profits. So Frank Rebo went on to uh, expand country, uh, uh, expand Denon's business into international countries. I think in his, uh, under his leadership alone, Denon went on to have manufacturing setups and sales channels in 14 countries, including South America. And uh, it was Frank Rebo who met with Ma Dr. Muhammad Yunus in Bangladesh in the year 1995. Um, I'm sure a lot of you must be already aware about uh, Dr. Muhammad Yunus. For those who don't know about him, he is the father of social entrepreneurship. Uh, he's a Nobel laureate. He has won the Nobel Peace Prize in the year 1996. And he's the founder of Grameen Microcredit Bank in Bangladesh. So uh, the idea of uh, Mohammed Yunus was that setting up a microcredit bank, which works on lesser interest rates, will not just be able to sustain this microfinancing company, but will also provide a sustainable income source to people who really want to create a business or uh, fed, uh, fed for a livelihood. So they work with ladies and small vendors, provide them some loan to start a business, and then gradually they uh, take some amount of profits to recover their loan and generate certain interest. So the investments and interest rate is not very high. It is accessible for everybody. And also it helps them manage their business. So that's the whole idea of uh, social entrepreneurship by Dr. Muhammad Yunus, that uh, we... Uh, that we create businesses that uh, solve the social and into, uh, environmental problems by sustaining itself. Maybe not creating huge amount of profits, but sustaining itself. So for sustaining a venture, you always need some amount of profits. So that was the whole concept of uh, Muhammad Yunus and Denon. And in the year 1995, uh, Denon with uh, Dr. Muhammad Yunus formed uh, something called uh, um, Grameen Denon Food Limited, wherein they created a product called Shokti Plus. Now, the precise reason they made this product was 85% uh, of um, uh, children in, uh, sorry, 58, 58% of children in uh, Bangladesh, both in major cities and rural areas, were suffering from malnutrition. They did not have uh, the requisite kind of way. They were all underweighted. So uh, citing this, they wanted to create something that is cost effective, accessible and healthy. And that's when Denon came up with a product called Shokti Plus. Um, and this uh, particular product would provide 30% of the dietary requirement of a kid. So uh, the, the product itself is rich in protein, uh, zinc. Uh, vitamin A and iodine. So 30% of the daily dietary requirement of these four or five nutrients was covered in just one cup of yogurt. And this product was not just accessible and cheap, but it was very densely distributed. So these were the aspects of Denon and Grameen that they used the farmers. So they were generating uh, income for the farmers. Denon set up their own manufacturing unit, buying the milk from the farmers, generating income for them. 
then they would make this product and give it out to women and van pullers to sell it in the cities and the communities so automatically the product would reach out to everybody so even today if you go to bangladesh even in the most rural communities you will find shokti plus selling you may not find a pepsi and or a colgate selling or a pepsi selling but you will definitely find a shokti plus selling why because they use the local people the the power of uh, poverty here that because these people were in need of work and they provided them an opportunity to sell something and generate income likewise they were able to provide something very sustainable healthy to the kids and their families so fulfilling the idea of creating impact for people's health locally fostering inclusive growth and becoming a certified b corp now if you know uh, being a certified b corp is when a company becomes a sustainable has has a good manufacturing practices while being sustainable and creating environmental uh, impact makes you a certified b corp so and this is the status that the non uh, gdfl the gramin the non food limited has attained so and just imagine the kind of uh, growth and uh, fostering they have done for the health of the kids and for the society so here you see that the social venture the social entrepreneurship model became so sustain sustainable that today uh, the non gdfl the shokti plus uh, is helping is created impact for about 3 lakh children there are about 200 women who work with them and uh, 170 van pullers so imagine with uh, such a powerful idea they have been able to create income generation and health benefits for such a large population uh going forward and talking about the concepts of sustainability and the goals of sustainability like i have mentioned already a sustainability is a multidimensional model it is not limited to just one thing it is about poverty it is about hunger it is about well being it is about growth it is about decent work opportunities it is about sustainable cities sustainable communities it is about good manufacturing practices it is about innovation so sustainability is multidimensional these are the four sustainable goal that um, the non adheres to but being sustainable does not always mean social so why because like you have seen that uh, in lift lift is sustainable but lift is not social so concepts of sustainability is for everybody social may not be for everybody but sustainability is for everybody so even at an individual level at a uh, organizational level at a at a personal level you can incorporate sustainability into your lifestyle any which way possible uh now this brings to my third case study and this is the final case study and that is the case study of silk karman how does silk karman work and how does silk karman bring in the concepts of profitability and sustainability into its organization so this is the working model that the silk karman uses it's a very linear working model wherein we go to the micro entrepreneurs and community we provide them training we we provide them tools and machinery we set up local partners because often these communities are uh, usually they have language barriers they are only speaking their mother tongue or local tongue they have co commu commutation barriers because they are residing in remote areas so we set up local partners who coordinate with them on behalf of us forming a bridge between us and the community members and they provide whatever the community members need or whatever they develop they pass it on through us through these local partners creating a good local value chain so this is the value based supply chain that we create in bamboo growing regions so that the people can generate better and sustainable sources of income and then when these products come to silk karman we sell it through our brand in india and abroad and finally reaching to our customers and these customers whom we sell these products to are people who are conscious about sustainability they understand the concepts of environment moreover the products are designed specifically to address to the pain points of the customers so you have to understand here we are not just looking at community building we are also looking at customer experiences so we are bringing in concepts of both social and profit into our company 
while we are creating a value chain, we are also creating value addition for our customers. Um, let me just explain this to you with the example of a new product that we have developed, which is the Bamboo Leaves Tea, B-U-T. Uh, what we cited during the pandemic that there was a lot of uh, include uh, a lot of migrant laborers were walking in into Tripura, and suddenly there was a dearth of no work. Now, when it comes to artisanship, it is a long practice. It is it takes time for a person to become an artisan, right? So we could not just train them overnight and turn them into an artisan. So we had to come up with a product that would be more sustainable and lasting and more profit oriented so that we can provide them the sustainable income that they're looking for. That's when we struck an idea. Basically, my co-founder struck, struck an idea that whatever bamboo that we procure, all the leaves go waste. So why not use these leaves and make something? And that's when we created the blend for BUT, the bamboo leaves tea. We got it lab tested. And the product itself is rich, highly rich in nutrients such as silica, protein, uh, zinc, potassium. Um, there's so many that I'm actually even forgetting. Um, zinc, copper, copper that it's it's there in a it's a balanced diet so just one cup of tea can give you some very high amount of rare nutrients uh, citing this we understood that the customers just like you and me are sitting on our laptops today we do not have access to a balanced diet considering we are mostly sitting so we can only eat so much that because there are not a lot of uh, workout or physical activity so we cannot have an elaborate meal so we might just miss out on nutrition in that case so plant-based protein and the and rare nutrients something that comes in comes in form of a cup, uh, teacup is something that is accessible something that's uh, drinkable and beneficial for the customers so citing this we with one product we solved the problems for the migrant labors and we solved the problems for our customers when it comes to uh, nutritious uh, nutri nutrition nutrition and this is how uh, Silk Carmen incorporated the concepts of social sustainable venture and profit making. So on one side, we are reaching out to interna international market. On the other side, we are preserving heritage and traditional practices. On one side, we are doing product innovation. On the other side, we are creating value chain. Um, on one side, we are generating profits. And on the other side, we are building communities. So these are the two aspects that uh, Silk Carmen works on and how we are balancing it out. And this is the third case study that I would be concluding with. So the one final thing that I have to talk about in sustainability is that sustainability has to be seamless. Uh, while we were talking about sustainable entrepreneurship, uh, we always see that people actually have to make efforts to be sustainable and that is not how it should be if you look at the story of prithu when the rishis did the churning right that kind of churning that kind of month and we have to do with ourselves too sustainability is something that you can practice at a very micro level also so say if you're going to buy a dress for a party just ask yourself one question do you really need to buy a dress or is there already something in your wardrobe that you can wear and still look great right so uh, sustainability is something that has to come from within. It has to be seamless. It does not have to have a lot of effort. Only then is it sustainable. And also sustainability will vary from person to person. If you have a different perspective about things, you have different ideas of sustainability and they are just as good as my idea of sustainability. Because we are two different individuals. We have two different ways of looking at the world and we have two different ways of being sustainable and all ways are good ways, right? So as long as you are incorporating the fact and the thought that you have to preserve while you are creating, it's fine, right? So you do not really have to go by the norms of somebody else. You just have to create your own sustainable ideas. Uh, and this is where I would like to end. Uh, so thank you so much for listening and having me here. I really hope uh, that this presentation and this session would have helped you understand sustainability, sustainable entrepreneurship, the concept of sustainability, and uh, 
also how you can adopt sustainability or how enterprises adopt sustainability uh, in case you have any question you can mail me at hello at the rate self uh, you can use the subject line sustainable entrepreneurship so that i know uh, that you probably attended this uh, webinar and you have a question pertaining to something that i talked about in this particular webinar uh, you may also visit our website at uh, www.silpkarman.com to know about how we uh, what are what are the kind of products that we make how are we making and what is the philosophy of the brand you may follow us and uh, connect with us on our social media handles as well. uh, so thank you so much for hearing me i would like to now hand it over to shefali thank you so much aksha it was a very engrossing session and i enjoyed it a lot so I learned personally for myself also a lot of many things and I sure will try to inculcate them in my daily life as well. So we're very okay. grateful for you for accepting our invitation and giving your precious time from the busy schedule. And okay. A very, very uh, nice address, uh, you know, opening up the eyes for especially the youngsters who are into consumerism to look up to sustainability as something which is required for our future. So I, re I request all the speakers to please uh, remain online for the question answer session that will be taking after the second session. Thank you so much, Akshya. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Tatiana. Before that, I would like to uh, give a basic introduction uh, to Tatiana. So I would like to introduce uh, the second session speaker, Ms. Tatiana Shape, founder and CEO of Global Impact Network. Ms. Shape is the youngest author in Zimbabwe. She is currently in the Global Council for the NGO World Merit and is promoting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Her academic background includes international relations at King's College London, technology entrepreneurship at Stanford University. She is committed to Global Impact Network's vision and mission, which will continue to build bridges between technology and sustainability through collaboration, accountability, and transparency with all stakeholders. Global Impact Network itself is headquartered in Stanford, California. It tracks, measures, and showcases sustainable progress in order to understand how close or far we are from the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Its mission is to connect with people and projects that matter and facilitate positive change for both nature as well as society. It aims to provide with tools to make sustainable choices, measure the impact, and become a leader in sustainability. Along with her, we also have the pleasure of having Ms. Mayuri N. She is also Chief Information Officer, Global Impact Network. Her education entails Stanford Environmental and Water Studies from Stanford University, California, United States of America, and undergraduate degree in Chemical Engineering from SSN College of Engineering, Anna University, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. She's also been Campus Manager at Sit Improper Campaign for PNG Whisper India, Best Paper Award at National Conference on Thermophysical Properties at IGCAR, Kalpakam, India. Many national and international publications in reputed journals with a varied research experience. An active member of organizing committee team of the International Conference on Recent Advancements in Chemical, Environmental and Energy, uh, energy Engineering. She's also been the convener of the conference Sustainable Trends in Energy and Environmental Resources and conducted at SSN College of Engineering and many more. On behalf of Dr. Ambedkar College, I express my deep gratitude to you for accepting our invitation. And now I would like to request Ms. Tatiana Shapi to kindly enrich us all and all the participants on sustainable entrepreneurship. Hello, everybody. First and foremost, thank you so much for such a wonderful introduction. I'm very grateful to be a part of this discussion. So uh, Mayuri will be sharing the screen. Uh, before we get started, though, I'll just start by sharing my story and my journey as an entrepreneur and uh, showcase um, my company with my partner Mayuri with Global Impact Network as an example that I hope will inspire you to understand and to create your own sustainable enterprises. So I'm going to begin with a quote by one of the greatest men that I've always been very inspired by, Nelson Mandela. And he once said that education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. 
Now, when it comes to entrepreneurship, my journey started at a very young age, and I'll get to that in a second, but it is extremely important to understand that when you are starting up a company, obviously you first have to figure out what is the problem that you are solving? What is your unique solution? You know, identifying the needs of the consumers or your clients that you're attempting to provide that solution for. And when it comes to sustainability, for me, it incorporates the triple bottom line, which is people, planet and profit, right? So let's start by sharing my story. Um, my name is Tatiana. I am half Russian, half Zimbabwean. I was born and raised in Zimbabwe, which is in Southern Africa. And I, I grew up in a privileged household, yet I was exposed to a lot of poverty and social injustice at a very young age. And this fueled my desire to want to make a positive impact in my community and in my country. And I was, I'm very lucky to have such an incredible mother. She is a solemn humanitarian. And she used to take me with her to a lot of orphanages and charities. And, you know, I started to question at a very young age the differences in the inequalities between me and the children that I visited. I would question, how, why do I have a roof over my head? Why do I have a loving family? Why do I have water and food on the table? How do I have an education? And these kids that we visited did not. And so my mother would always bring uh, food donations and book donations and clothes donations and hand them to me and I would hand them to the kids. And I so deeply wanted to do something myself. Um, and I learned to read and write at a very young age. And so I decided that I wanted to contribute in my own way. So my journey when it came to entrepreneurship started at the age of eight years old, where I wrote and published the book called The Lonely Tiger. Um, and 100% of the proceeds went to empower children in Zimbabwe to receive an education. Now, fast track a few years later, I studied international relations and international law at King's College in London. Um, and during that time, I was obviously studying about the international system and flaws in the international system. And I was extremely frustrated, firstly, by the fact that there's only five countries in the world that can implement and enforce international law. Um, and at the same time, I had a wonderful opportunity uh, where I spoke at the United Nations in 2016 on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number 16, which is peace, justice, and strong institutions. And my theoretical knowledge based with my practical experience now understanding the way the international system works, being exposed to stakeholders um, at the United Nations, I started noticing an overarching problem of a lack of accountability, transparency, and collaboration amongst all stakeholders when it comes to achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So here we are. Um, not sure if you don't mind yet, just stay on that side for a second. So this is the current state of the world, right? In 2015, 193 countries and all member states of the United Nations agreed to achieve these 17 global goals by 2030. Now, currently, we do not know the progress that we have made as a global society towards achieving these goals. Without knowing where progress is being made, we simply don't know where progress is required. We do not know where to invest and create value in the future. So this is this overarching problem of a lack of accountability, transparency and collaboration amongst all stakeholders, amongst governments, amongst NGOs, amongst businesses, amongst institutions, schools and citizens is hindering our ability to achieve sustainable development. Uh, could you go to the next slide, please? Um, yes, so now we get to the biggest frustration. You can get, go to the next slide. So whilst this is all going on, I was extremely frustrated by the fact that online, you could not find any data or any information back in 2016 on how exactly countries were performing towards achieving sustainable development. 
this frustrated me so much to the point that I realized something has to be done. There needs to be a solution. And now with the rise of globalization, coupled with the use of social media being a huge tool in, in terms of exchange of information and access to information, I realized that there was an opportunity to create a new social media that is able to empower people to take action towards the global goals and to measure their unique contribution in achieving sustainability. So when it comes to sustainable development, truly it, one of the biggest problems, I mean, despite the fact that there's nearly 5 billion people with access to the internet, the biggest problem for sustainable development is the inability to capture real-time data. Without being able to access real-time data, we don't know where progress is being made towards quality education or towards achieving no poverty or towards achieving zero hunger. Um, and so if you go to the next slide, please, Em. More so on an individual level. So on a governmental level, there is a lack of tech technology solutions to monitor and track their progress towards sustainable development. However, on an individual level, I feel like many people feel very helpless and hopeless and frustrated that they often question, how can I make a difference? Do my daily choices really have the ability to change the world? You know, we constantly flooded with terrible news, whether it's uh, wildfires ranging from the Amazon to uh, Australia to um, California, or whether it be plastic washing up on our shores. We're constantly dominated by this negative news and, and people do not know how to take action to contribute towards the global agenda, nor do they understand the value of their positive individual actions because they don't have the tools to measure their unique positive impact towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So we at Global Impact are very proud to announce the solution that we have, which is, if you go to the next slide, please, Em. Global Impact is the first social impact network. It's the first of its kind social media in digital revolution that tracks, measures, and showcases positive impact for sustainable development. So if you go on to the next slide, please. Yes, this is our vision. So our vision is to give people the power to collectively solve the world's toughest environmental, social, and economic challenges by facilitating and praising positive impact globally. Now, our mission is to connect you with the people and projects that matter to you and facilitate positive change for both nature and society. So we aim to provide you with the tools to make sustainable choices, measure your impact, and become a leader in sustainability. What we're doing at Global Impact, and Mayuri is right now going to give you a demonstration of our platform and the way that it works, but what we're doing at Global Impact is disrupting the status quo. So social media that currently exists, whether it be Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, they all have their own space, right? But it's so, it's so based on how many followers you have, how many likes you have. Um, it's gotten to the point where it's not real. It's not, it's, it's not a rep, real representation of who we are. Things are photoshopped. And so global impact is disrupting the status quo where it becomes cool to do good. And so without further ado, I'm really happy to introduce you to Mayuri, our Chief Information Officer, who will be telling you a little bit more about Global Impact and showing you our application. Mayuri, you're on mute. So sorry. <laughs> Good afternoon. No, no, so I'd like to start off this presentation by telling you a quote that was said by Martin Luther King. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. Global Impact Network is the first of its kind social media platform that tracks, measures, and showcases your daily sustainable actions, actions that matter. Um, as change makers, you and I would have probably heard this questions just a million times. 
do your sustainable actions really matter? Having a meat-free meal or you know, replacing your plastic straw, do they really matter? Well, yes. Global Impact Network is the answer to that. We bring to you the metrics of your positive actions. Uh, my journey as an entrepreneur started at my time in Stanford, but a lot before that, my dad always used to tell me that innovation is always the rubric of who you would become as a person. You have to bring the innovation in your own aesthetic. Let it be, I found a new way to you know, reduce uh, waste at my house or the area that I live in, everything matters. So at Global Impact, what we do is connect individual change makers like you and me to participate in a global discussion from all over the world, connecting you to the projects and people all over the world. Call to action. Our platform offers direct actionable uh, statements that you can do. Like for example, let's take uh, I donate books or anything that you want to do, we have it on our platform. Metrics and analysis. We supply you with the impact statistics, which is basically every small sustainable thing that you do has its positive impact on the world. So we give you accurate details about how your, change, your action has impacted the world. Oh, one second, so sorry about that. Okay, so here at Global Impact, we adopt something called gamification, which is basically you and I compete to make ourselves go higher up on the leaderboard, but the true winner is actually Mother Earth. We are in a race for good, for doing good. We are rewarded with points and badges. Um, the badges I would like to call as, um, you know, those three stars that policemen wear, it's our badge. It's our stars for being change makers. We also have social media features like uh, commenting, sharing, and for us to get inspired because inspiration is where our true heart lies. Sorry to interrupt you there for a quick second. What Mayuri hasn't mentioned is that she is in charge and she has built the whole algorithm, which basically provides you with immediate impact statistic results. So similar to Instagram, when you upload a photo, when you click submit, each of our posts are associated to a challenge that's connected to one or more of the global goals. And when you click submit, you automatically get your impact statistics. So we've spent a great deal amount of time, and this is where innovation comes into it, by building an algorithm that is able to provide you with your unique change that you've brought to the world. And when we talk about gamification, we talk about this global race for good. We want to shine the light on our global impact leaders, those people that are paving the way for a more sustainable future. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna quickly show you guys a demo where you will see our change makers sharing their stories, creating campaigns or host and attend events that um, our users can join. We have notifications that help us stay informed and stay inspired. And finally, change the world together. I'm gonna quickly show you a demo of our platform. One second, okay. So this is the home screen of uh, Global Impact where you can sign up. For, to start off, we start uh, by picking which type of profile you are creating. In the case that you are creating an individual profile, you go ahead and click the individuals and then you go ahead and fill out all the necessary details and don't forget to check the terms of use and privacy policy 
and sign up. So after signing up, you get you can log in, and I'm going to log in with uh, my uh, ID. And as any other social media platform, it brings you to our home tab, where we where you can see the other users posting their sustainable actions. Like we've got Madeline who goes and buys vegetable from the local farmers market which is under local produce. Local produce uh, contributes to SDG goal two, which is uh, zero poverty. And we've got number 12, which is responsible consumption and production. SDG goal 13, climate action, one of my favorites. So then we've got our own very amazing CEO, Tatiana Sharp, whose uh, passion comes from SDG4, which is quality education. She has uh, submitted an action in tutor. And the best part of our platform is the view impact, which gives us your impact statistics. As you can see, there is the reading proficiency, you've got the mathematics proficiency, you've got the gender parity index, and so on and so forth. So uh, the next thing I would like to show you is my personal profile. So as you can see, one of my favorite badges is meat free meals because I'm almost a vegetarian. So uh, one thing I'd like to mention here is that Global Impact has uh, motivated me to be a lot more sustainable by doing things that I can, like having a meat free meal. So I've got meat free meal and, and meat free meal again, and then we've got reuser. So when I submit every post, I get an impact score, which is generated right over here. So based on this score, I get ranked along with the other change makers that are there on the platform. I will go into detail in just a moment. So I would like to show you the challenges that we have. We have local produce, advocate, reuser, meat free meals, I donate books, beach cleanup, tutor. So now I'm going to show you how to submit an action. So I go head over to the meat free meals badge. And as you can see, we've got the challenge overview where you can click on it and find out where, what exactly is the challenge. And then we've got, you know, a couple of videos to help you guys out. And yeah, so we go ahead and submit an action. So I'm gonna click continue and I am going to submit a challenge. So um, the very first thing that you have to do is remember to take a picture of your sustainable action. So fortunately for me, I did take a photo and I'm going to upload it. Um, let's say a meat-free meal. Sorry about that. So here's the very interesting part. So the consumption rates are different for each country. So we have classified the consumption rates for, um, for all the countries, which is why it is imperative that you choose your country correctly. And in case you are a private person and you want to keep your, the photos to yourself, you have the choice to keep it private. And I am going to submit. And now let's wait for the magic. There you go. So, um, so as you can see, there are um, meat-free meals causes uh, reduction in meat consumption, reduction in greenhouse gases, and also the amount of water that's being used to produce the meat that we consume. So yeah, so... As you can see, now we have something called the leaderboard, which is basically how you and I are ranked based on the scores that we scores that we get for each submission. So we've got a lot of uh, ambassadors and users from India. 
So I'm going to show you the filter where we can filter it based on India. Mm, I'm so sorry that it's taking this long. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So we've got we've got a lot of users, as you can see from India. We can also filter our leaderboards based on the SDGs, let's say quality education, and there you can see, and then we can filter it based on trends as well. So um, if uh, you can also invite your friends using this icon and go ahead and you can share it to your WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, or even mail them. So you have that option. So the next thing that I want to show you that I am extremely proud about is our communities. So what we do is very essential to building communities. Like if you and I choose to be a part of something bigger, we need to feel like there's a sense of belonging, which is what our communities do. So now I am going to show you something amazing. So we were able to um, make our first deal with a government, the Seychelles Islands, and they are our first governmental client. And as you can see, they've got all their uh, users, their citizens putting in their posts, the local farmer's market, and then you've got meat free meals, and again, local an advocate and things like that. And as always, you have a bio, uh, which basically essentially talks about your association or your organization. You've got the SDG goals, the hashtags, your focus area, and then your website. I'm gonna quickly run to the events tab where you can see the map feature. Over here, you, we can actually see the events that are happening throughout the world. Um, currently, because of COVID regulations, we aren't really able to host a lot of uh, events uh, in person because, well, yeah. So we've got the event list, which will show us everything. And now I am going to show you the events. Um, one of the events that I was able to participate is a tree planting event back at Seychelles. And the most amazing thing about hosting events on our platform is that you would be able to see the total impact that is being caused by the particular event. So during this event, we were able to save about 130,000 kgs of uh, carbon dioxide by planting these trees throughout the lifetime of the tree. And then you get to see the individual posts. This is the tree that I planted and these are the SDG goals that it contributes to. And yep, that's, that's essentially the demo of our platform. And if you wish to sign out, just go over to the settings bar and say sign out. And this is your global impact. So now I am going to shift back to our presentation so that I can continue a little about what we do for organizations. So we adopt software as a service model of Global Impact Network, which is basically how we show organizations how to create impact. Like we empower them to make their own impact. Like they get to host campaigns, which is essentially giving a target for the citizens and the users to achieve a certain thing. Let's say if it's reduced carbon dioxide, then we, all the citizens and all the users have the opportunity to participate and also uh, obtain certain goodies. 
So um, another important thing about software as a service is that we give real time data to the organization so that they can monitor and they can also use it as a marketing tool and rewarding. It's it's more of a very, it, it's actually, I would call it a, a bridge between the organization and the user. And then again, this is this is all about how to start a campaign and how we can be a better bridge. Um, so another thing that we are going uh, that we are coming up with in the near future is how we start rewarding you for the good actions that you take. Um, it, because incentivizing people is very, very important. Um, Tatiana, do you want to? Yeah. So what I just want to add is that global impact, let me quickly put my video back on. So global impact works with B2C, which is business to consumer. So with individuals, B2B, so with businesses, we work with companies, schools, um, nonprofits, and other institutions, as well as B2G. Um, with uh, governments. And what we have done is we are creating a social currency. So as I mentioned, we're just disrupting the status quo where it becomes cool to do good. And what your impact score basically means, it, it, it becomes converted into an impact dollar. So the more good you do, the more rewards eventually you'll get. And that's where incentivizing people to do good comes through on the platform. So something that we've coined at Global Impact is a term called the impact value chain analysis. Now, when it comes to sustainable development, it's extremely important for us to be able to trace, first of all, where exactly in the value chain sustainability is stemming from. So in terms of what, how, the way we've coined the impact value chain analysis, both my Yuri and I, we actually met at Stanford University. So let's pretend I'm still a student at Stanford. All the actions that I take on global impact, the impact score that I create contributes to Stanford as an institution. Now, Stanford's total impact score and statistics are an accumulation of all of its students and professors and community members. Stanford's impact score contributes to the state of California. Now, the state of California is an accumulation of all the impact created by all the schools, universities, businesses, nonprofits, and citizens. And then the state of California contributes to the United States. So eventually, what you will be able to see is exactly who has contributed towards progressing sustainable development in nations. Um, and then moving on to the next point, um, if you go on to the next slide, um, this is currently who we are working with. Um, we're really excited uh, by all the positive feedback we've received from our users, being able to see the fact that they are feeling empowered because they know exactly how much of an impact they're creating in the world. And so when we go back to the topic of sustainable entrepreneurship, this is our team. This is our vision for a more sustainable world. And essentially, you know, we believe that um, if you just go to that last slide so everybody can see it, this is where global impact is where technology meets humanity. And we believe whatever gets measured gets done. So if you are interested and you have enjoyed our um, sustainable enterprise, we'd love for you to join the community, for you to join the movement, to track your sustainable actions. Um, if you are watching this live demo, feel free to scan this QR code. It'll take you to um, either the iOS or Android app. It'll take you to whichever mobile device you have. You'll be able to install the device and start taking action, measuring your impact and becoming a global impact leader. And lastly, uh, this is our Instagram page. So again, you can scan the QR code, keep up to date with all of our latest updates. We have a lot of new exciting features and functionality that is coming. And um, yeah, I really want to just be able to leave final remarks. Thank you so much, Mayuri, for doing a brilliant uh, demonstration. I know it's your first time speaking um, and sharing the platform. So I'm really, 
really proud of you, but I want to empower everybody to know that regardless of the change that you make in the world, even if you are able to impact one person's life and make a change for one person, you have done something really incredible. And I want to empower all of you to know that whatever your brain and imagination can think of, you can create. And there is no such thing as failure because failure is simply a pathway towards success. It is a constant, when it comes to entrepreneurship, it is a constant battle of believing in yourself and making iterations, learning throughout the process. These, this is what is working. This is what is not working. I'm going to iterate on that process. I'm going to continue innovating and, and just simply don't give up because in the end, it's perseverance that wins. And so I really hope that we will continue to see this fueling new generation of leaders, of global leaders, whether it be in the science field or government field or the tech field. I encourage you all to focus on sustainable entrepreneurship, to focus on sustainability in general, and just know that you do have the power to change the world. So thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to share with you our story. And we look forward to you joining the movement. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tatiana. It was a very wonderful and interesting session, especially seeing how we can go forward with the Global Impact Network platform. I'm sure all my students would be very much excited to join it and experience uh, how they can you know, go forward for a better future, a sustainable future for all of us. And as you said, global impact is all about humanity meeting technology. So I'm sure if we are able to imbibe this uh, as a habit and moving from other social platforms to global impact, it will be, you know, um, a rise for all of us to a better future. So on that note, uh, I would like to thank you for accepting our invitation and taking out your precious time, even though you were not well, uh, still you uh, showed up. And thank you, Mayuri, for supporting us, uh, sharing the presentation with us. It was very uh, interesting and beautiful. Okay. On that note, I would like to take up a few questions which I have from various platforms, from students and academicians. So uh, first of all, um, is Akshay and Tatiana both are present? So shall I take uh, questions for Tatiana first? Or I'll uh, take questions for Akshay first, since she was the first speaker. So Akshay, I have uh, two questions for you. Uh, one of the person uh, is asking, as bamboo business includes motivation and incentives from government, so is it something where you get uh, good support, uh, where you can start your own bamboo startup and the government will support you in that? Well, uh, not just for bamboo businesses, but uh, for startups in general, uh, there are a lot of schemes, especially the uh, Pradhan Mantri uh, uh, Rozgar Yojana, wherein you can actually apply through the local KVB, that is the, um, wait, let me just tell you this, uh, uh, Khadi, Khadi board. Uh, yeah. So the local Khadi board. Okay, Tatiana, ka screen sharing band karayi. Uh, so the uh, local Khadi board is uh, somewhere where you can apply with a proposal on uh, what you want to do. And it will not just help you in uh, setting up uh, uh, the business, but it will also help you in um, gaining a, a marketing avenue so that you can sell through the Khadi board stores. So yes, uh, there are, that's the one platform which I would suggest in case uh, one of you do not have a company incorporated already, uh, go through the Khadi board. It will take some time for you to get uh, get to the interview and get the financing, but it's a it's a better way to do that. Uh, apart from this, the if you've started a venture, then there are multiple schemes through Startup India uh, and other banks and uh, places where you can apply for funding support. Okay, thank you, Aksha. I have another question for you. Yes. I want to ask uh, that the contribution of philanthropy towards sustainable entrepreneurship and the philanthropy model for sustainable entrepreneurship is itself sustainable or not? 
Uh, well, honestly, uh, there is uh, philanthropy. If done uh, with the aspect of balance, then it does work by way of sustainable entrepreneurship. For example, as we saw it in the Denon Group, uh, they are doing it purely uh, for them. The, uh, the priority is. Uh, uh, impact generation and profit comes only much later so if you uh, if you uh, split it into two philanthropy and sustainable entrepreneurship um, they have to go hand in hand if you have to make it actually sustainable um, and also from an enterprise uh, uh, point of view sustainability would mean to sustain your business by your own so you do not have to be dependent upon external funds so uh, you can integrate philanthropic actions into your enterprise and make it a sustainable venture but it's all about how you are balancing the two okay so do not really because a lot of time i've seen that ngos really struggle to um, keep balancing out their finances because they're majorly dependent upon external funding to uh, carry out their activities so if you can just focus on philanthropic actions with certain uh, merge it with certain revenue aspects uh, it will only help you sustain your uh, venture better so philanthropy has to be there that you know if you if there's something that you want to do it has to be there but try to modify it into a way so that you can sustain it yourself thank you thank you Aksha. i have one more question that uh, one of the students is asking that what are the growth prospects for, uh, in especially in exports for bamboo well um india has been exporting uh, the, uh, there's been a lot of growth uh, since the past two years itself there's been uh, about a 28% growth in exports of bamboo products to uh, abroad very recently we have done a partnership in united states with a company called uh, uh, bamboostores.org so what they are doing is they uh, creating end-to-end -end products uh, from us, including of bamboo packaging, bamboo straws, bamboo cutlery, bamboo coffee mugs, and a lot of uh, a range of uh, kitchen utility and trying to implicate it into the uh, local public. So there's been a rise in demand of bamboo kitchen, home, and other products. And now that more and more people are working from home, we are also doing a range of furnitures for laptop stands, table works, and other things. Uh, but one thing about export that I would really want to highlight here is that it's it's not something that goes uh, through mass trend. You know, it, it has to be very specific. So something, some product that works for the United States may not work for the for Europe. So you have to be very specific when you're working uh, on an export or model. Uh, as, but as far as the perspective or the future of bamboo and exports is concerned, uh, it's got a very bright avenue. If you're able to market and position your product to the right client at the right time, then it will definitely convert into a good sales. Thank you so much, Aksha. Uh, you really answered the questions very well or to the point. Now, I have a few because of the time paucity, I cannot ask you all the questions. So I'll just take up a few questions for Tatiana now. Yeah. And then I'll uh, start with the summing up of the deliberations. So, uh, Tatiana, uh, the first question for you is, as you've already explained to the students how this platform is very different, but still, uh, you know, they want to understand how, uh, you know, what's the point of leaving Facebook and Instagram? Those are more consumer oriented uh, platforms and moving to global impact. So will it, that, will it be that much fun as it is in Facebook and Instagram for them to move from this platform to the another? So I think the point is not necessarily moving from one platform to another. It's about providing variety. So Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, as I mentioned before, they all have their space, but they're focused very much on a different type of status. They are um, focused on obviously sharing pictures and memories and, you know, that's totally cool. What Global Impact provides that is unique and totally different is that every post that you make, you receive impact statistics. You're able to measure your unique contribution to the world. You're able to leave behind a digital footprint and legacy of creating a positive impact so that future generations remember you as a change maker. And um, I think one thing that's really, that's going to be totally different 
with other social networks is you saw briefly our leaderboard, right? With the individuals, this is going to expand. So when we talk of gamification, we're talking about competing in a global race for good. Um, this leadership board expands to provide you a leadership board of companies. So you start to look in the fashion industry and you'll see how companies are ranked in sustainability. You'll see how governments are ranked in sustainability. You'll see how nonprofits are ranked in sustainability. And something that we focus on extremely, um, that's very important to us is verification, making sure that we are verifying that these companies, these organizations, these schools, these individuals are really taking sustainable action. So integrating technology, integrating image recognition, blockchain, um, and you know, optimal character recognition to verify uh, is something that we focused on. So it's, it's an entirely different part of social media that doesn't exist. Right. Um, so I have another question for you. Uh, one of the students has asked that, um, as you've already told, that Seychelles government has tied up with you. So how are the other governments reacting to this platform? Because I think if we bring up governments to this platform, it would be on another level. Yeah, so actually we have been receiving very positive responses from governments. Why? Because governments currently do not have the correct tools and infrastructure to monitor the progress and to capture data. Now, when we talk about capturing data, for us specifically, we're talking about capturing impact data, right? So governments are interested in knowing how are they increasing the proficiency levels when it comes to quality education? How, are the, how is the country performing when it is to decreasing no poverty or creating zero hunger? And because there's a lot of a lack of technology solutions to monitor progress. Um, that's where our software as a service has been, you know, has been taken very positively by governments because they're now able to, um, they're, they're now able to monitor and track the progress that they're making towards sustainable development. And at the same time, rewarding the companies, the organizations, the schools, the institutions that are contributing towards their national agenda and rewarding them. So uh, yes, it is, it's going to be really exciting. Um, the World Expo is coming up in Dubai. As you know, the World Expo happens every four years. So we will be launching at the World Expo and we will be at a couple of different governmental pavilions. So hopefully we can get India on board. Um, that'll be very exciting. And especially your, your, your institution and your school, we would love to see all the positive impact that you're creating towards sustainability. That's great. Um, we are also looking forward to tie up with you, as you told me, the concept of, uh, you know, bringing uh, college ambassadors and state ambassadors. We'll uh, definitely look forward to it after that. Uh, due to time positive, I have a few more questions, but I, I'm not able to take them up. So on that note, I would like to sum up for the deliberations for today's uh, webinar. So... We started with uh, the first session by Ms. Akshaya Shri, where she explained the various facets of sustainable entrepreneurship and how it is transforming the future. I really enjoyed, uh, and most of my uh, viewers would have also enjoyed, uh, the story of how the Mother Earth, uh, you know, uh, gives its uh, uh, protection in the name of Prithvi. Uh, to uh, King Prithvi and how that whole, uh, it was a very mythological and very interesting story. And understanding the concept through it was a very interesting uh, thing to do. Then uh, she also explained uh, why we need to give back to the nature, how we have to balance the resources and guarding while creating is uh, something we all will keep in mind for a long time for now. Uh, she also uh, shared the entrepreneurship uh, goals of creating innovation, employment, and risk. Then she also explained to us the case studies, one of Lyft, which was uh, uh, very new. I'm sure many of us uh, didn't know about it, but uh, it was very interesting to see. Then uh, another example, I, I have personally had the known uh, when I was on one of my international trips, but I didn't know the story behind it. So it was very, uh, you know, uh, moving for me to hear the story that it was started for children who were suffering from spinal diseases and how just eating yogurt, which is already in our tradition, um, you know, became a sustainable business and grew uh, in such a large numbers to various countries, as she stated, France, US, 
um, so it was very interesting for us to know. And the final case study of her uh, institution itself, the Silk Kerman, and how it is changing the scenario, and especially the bamboo leaves tea, it is when um, she's supporting the craftsmen there uh, by innovating new products, providing them employment in the, is the need of the hour, especially during the corona lockdown and uh, pandemic situation. It's a commendable job, Aksha, really. So we're all very proud of you. Uh, and again, then she said sustainability, uh, sustainability has to be effortless and it should go hand in hand. So uh, with keeping that in mind, I'll definitely see uh, when I'm going to a party whether I should buy a new dress or not. <laughs> that is something that I will keep in mind for the next time. Uh, coming to that, uh, the second session, we had uh, Ms. Tatiana Sharp with us. Her session was also very engrossing and explaining how we need to, uh, you know, make changes in our lives, uh, make changes in the platforms that we use so that we move to a better future. She explained the inability to capture clear data as it was present and how um, she created this platform in Stanford and it came to life. And uh, we're all seeing it right now growing at a very great rate. Uh, she also explained uh, how we can share our stories, our day-to-day -day, uh, efforts in that direction to make this a better uh, sustainable uh, future for all of us. She stated how creating positive change in news was important, uh, wherein we were all discussing the negative issues in our environment. She also um, demonstrated her platform, uh, including how action, gamification, and social media features were there, and uh, which is very interesting. Then um, we had uh, Mayuri, who also demonstrated the platform. She also explained how B2B, B2G uh, platforms are being used and how we can create challenges and how we get incentives for the positive impact, uh, the impact dollar that we get. I'm sure it's a very uh, new and a nice concept, which will be very motivating for all of us. Uh, then uh, another thing which was very uh, inspiring for me was the social currency. As she coined, uh, coined the term, it is something that um, is, you know, rings a bell to anyone's ears. Uh, this is the need of the art. So social currency is something which all, all of us should be looking forward to. And then again, uh, creating impact value chain analysis and uh, having 100 ambassadors with people like PwC. Uh, so it is very uh, interesting to see uh, how so many people are getting attached to this initiative. Now, uh, I have to uh, come into the end of the program. Uh, I'm going to propose a formal vote of thanks. Feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it as rightly stated by William Arthur Watt. So I propose a formal vote of thanks as all good things come to an end. So has this webinar. on behalf of Dr. Ambedkar College, I take this opportunity to propose vote of thanks to those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this webinar on sustainable entrepreneurship. I would also like to thank uh, Ms. Akshya Shri uh, we're really enlightened with your knowledge and presence, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Ms. Tatiana Sharp, for an engrossing and wonderful session with detailed knowledge. I would also like to thank Mayuri uh, for showcasing the platform and explaining us um, all about Global Impact Network. I would like to thank our beloved principal, Dr. Mrs. B.A. Mary, madam, for her enthusiastic support. Uh, we would also like to thank uh, our honorable convener, Dr. Varsha Panbade, ma'am, and uh, HOD of the department and co-convener, Dr. Puttivar Ma'am, for their motivation. A special thanks to Mr. Sankal Bharke, sir, for his constant help in coordinating this webinar with full zeal. Uh, I'm very thankful to you, sir, for uh, helping me co coordinate this whole webinar in a very beautiful manner. I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Hema Menon, Ma'am, Dr. Shailesh Bahadre, sir, from IQAC, who helped me in organizing the whole procedure from scratch. I would like to thank Mr. Ashish Maraska, sir, who helped me in the, all the technical arrangements. Our heartfelt thanks to all students for their active participation, and last but not the least, our families for their unflinching support and coordination in these testing times to conduct the successful webinar. With these warm words and a kind message, we move to the end of today's webinar. Now, with the permission of all resource persons, I would like to draw a curtain on today's proceedings. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, so you all. Thank you, Shefali.
I once again thank you from Dr. Ambedkar College. Thank you, Akshaya. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Mayuri. And thank my DSEN team of Department of Commerce for organizing such a wonderful talk, wonderful thinkers by a lady, young lady entrepreneurs. A oh, very thank you to you all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. It's a pleasure that you gave us the opportunity. And thank you, Varsha, ma'am. It was her brainchild to, uh, you know, have this uh, concept of sustainable entrepreneurship. And uh, I'm very proud to have both the leading ladies, uh, women entrepreneurs here on this platform. Uh, last time I had both the males and both females. So I'm very happy with the diversity that I could do with both the webinars. Thank you so much. Thank you, Varsha, ma'am. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, uh, thank you principal, ma'am. Thank you, Mayuri. And thank you, everyone, for contributing and making this uh, program a success. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for hosting such a wonderful webinar. Most welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thank you, Mayuri. Thank you. This, was, this was wonderful. Get to know all of you and being part of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Your stories are very interesting and inspiring <laughs> also. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, with this, I shall close the meeting. Thank you. Uh, Tatiana, I'll just share the stats of YouTube and everything once I receive them from the technical team, okay? I'll get back to you with uh, whatever stats we've received for the webinar. Sure, that'll be great. But I just wanted to say thank you so much again for inviting us and uh, doing such a brilliant job. I'm really looking forward to collaborating. And, yes. um, you know, even if an opportunity comes up at Expo for us to showcase your institution and all the efforts that you're doing um, towards encouraging students to learn more about sustainability. We'd love to continue to collaborate. So it's been so wonderful to meet all of you. Uh, thank you so much. Very humbled to have been on, on, on this webinar and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much. And in fact, I shared the idea with uh, HOD ma'am, Dr. Varsha Panbure. She was also very enthusiastic about collaborating uh, with your uh, institution. And let's see, you can uh, you know share the details with me and I'll show up to uh, Panbure ma'am and the principal ma'am. And hopefully we can coordinate and bring this concept starting with our college. It would be a proud moment for all of us. Definitely. A hundred percent. We'll be in touch. Thank you so much, yes. everybody. Have a Thank wonderful you. next Thank day. You, Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye -bye. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. May end cut you, ma'am.